I'm Rob Panzarella with Airline Hydraulics. I'm here today to do a quick run through of the Bosch Rexroth Size and Select Assistant software. This software is primarily used to size variable speed hydraulic systems where you're either operating a hydraulic pump with a variable frequency drive or with a servo drive. I've got an application example here that I'm gonna put up on the screen and we can review it. It's a two axis press system and we're going to index a part and then we're going to press it and we're gonna use the software to come up with a best fit solution. So we've got our sample applic press application here where we've got 10 gallons per minute at 1000 PSI to index our part under the press. Then we've got a press cylinder that's going to rapidly advance at 20 gallons per minute and 500 PSI for two seconds. Once we contact the part, the press is then going to compact the part at a rate of two gallons per minute and 3000 PSI. When the part is fully compressed, we will then retract the press at the full 20 gallons per minute and 500 PSI for three seconds. When the press reaches the top of its stroke, we will then retract the part out of the press. So now we're going to log into the Cytronic Size and Select Assistant. We will input all of this data and we will then find out what our optimum solution is. So you've got several options. One is you can look at every solution under the sun. In our case, we're gonna focus on the motor and pump assembly, but you can also look at the uh, standard offerings that from Bosch Rexroth, namely the Citro Box or the Citro Pack. So we're gonna select the motor and pump assembly. And there are some standard applications for machine tools, plastics, machinery, presses, and some heavy industry applications. But we're gonna work with the free input to, um, to closely mimic our press process. Our choices here are a, uh, a frequency profile, or it's a position over, over frequency, and or you can do pressure and flow. And we're gonna do a pressure and flow in this hydraulic application. Okay, let's start here. So the first thing we're gonna do is index the part into the press. So we'll call that index forward. Now at our thousand PSI is now going to be 70 bar. Oh, numbers lock. And our flow, instead of 10 gallons a minute, we'll make that metric and we'll put 38 liters per minute. And that is going to happen over six seconds. So the nice thing that the software does, it actually puts in a ramp. Here is our 38 liters per minute, and then we get a deceleration ramp to a stop. But we're gonna put in our next function. And our next, next function is going to be press advance. Which is going to be at 500 PSI, so we're gonna call that 35 bar and 20 gallons per minute. So that's going to be 76 liters per minute. And that's gonna happen over a span of two seconds. So once, once we contact the part, we're actually going to do press. So that pressing function is going to occur at 3000 PSI or 210 bar and two gallons per minute. So that's going to be 7.6 liters per minute. And that's going to happen over 10 seconds. So let's take a look at what's going on here. We index the part first. Once we index the part, then we advance the press and you can see the flow rise to 76 liters per minute. The press advances, we touch the part. When we touch the part, we decelerate the press to 7.6 liters per minute. And we do a slow compaction of the part 
until we finish pressing and then we slow to a stop. Now it's time to open the press and remove the part. So we can say press open. That's going to be the same 500 PSI, so we'll call it 35 bar and 76 liters a minute again. And that's going to happen over three seconds. And then once the press is open, we get to remove the part or to index reverse. And that is the same 10 gallons a minute or 30, or sorry, got to do it, the pressure first. That was 35 or 70, 70 bar and 38 liters per minute. And that was going to occur over six seconds. So now our cycle's complete. This was our pressing. This is when we pressed very slowly. Then we open the press for these three seconds. Once the press is open, we then index the part to remove it from the press and our cycle's complete. Once you've got a good complete cycle, you just scroll down to the bottom and you can find the best solution to satisfy this application. So we click the find products button and we're just working with motor pump units. So it looks like to me our optimum solution is a seven and a half kilowatt motor or 10 horsepower electric motor with a 10 horsepower variable frequency drive and a 45 cc pump. So what you can see here is our motor utilization is at 91%. So we're, all, we're using almost all of the horsepower that that motor can put out at given time. The drive utilization is more of an average power consumption. And then the pump utilization means that we could possibly turn the pump faster to produce even more flow. There are several other solutions, but the first one's usually going to be the, the most optimal solution. Let's scroll down to the next one just to get an idea of what the differences would be. So the next one is a 10 horsepower electric motor, but a 15 horsepower drive and then the same 45 cc pump. So the difference here is we're not utilizing nearly as much of the drive. So that would just provide no additional performance and just a little bit more cost. Uh, if you look at the next proposed solution, it has a 15 horsepower electric motor, a 15 horsepower drive, and a 45 cc pump. Now this may prove a better choice for some people because maybe they don't wanna use the maximum output of the electric motor. In this case, we're only using 61% of the motor. But I'd like to go with the most efficient solution here. And we're gonna go back up for the, the first one that the, this, the software selected for us. And let's finalize that. So now what we get is a final configuration for this particular application. So you can save this application to, to come back and revisit it. Or if you had saved it, you could load it and you would have advanced past the entire um, select or the cycle process. So in this case, let's scroll down and they, it's configured it correct successfully. And now we can uh, look at the documentation. So what you can do is you can download the documentation to your email. You will get a link in your email to a, a document that looks like this. Typically be about 10 pages. This was the exact cycle profile that, that we inputted to the software. It gives us our maximum pressure, the cycle time, the maximum power consumed and the average power consumed. This just gives us a little profile of the main components, the 10 horsepower motor, the EFC variable frequency drive and the 45 cc pump and the utilization of each component. This is all stuff we've seen before. 
But in this case, we can actually look at this pressure versus fl flow rate profile, and we can see that we are below the, the maximum continuous pressure of the hydraulic pump. We're below the torque of the drive motor itself. So this is continuous torque and this is peak torque. We're actually under the continuous torque of the motor. And it's interesting here for a, a brief moment, we are just above the continuous operating power of the electric motor, but on average, we are below. These are our pressure and flow profiles versus time. And they're talking here about the swivel angle of the pump, and this is the different torque that the um, motor has to provide. So there's a couple instances where we've got peak torque under acceleration. This is some of our system data. And what we're talking about here is if we had a conventional system versus our system, a uh, conventional system would consume 8.8 .8 kilowatts, and we're at an average of uh, 7.4 kilowatts. So it is quite a savings, about 15% in this case. And some of the CO2 savings, it's actually 16%. I just fudged that and I was pretty darn close. The, the savings in energy would be 16% using the variable speed system over the uh, conventional system. Also use, utilizing a smaller hydraulic pump, which uh, would be a little bit of an optimized solution in this case. This is all the cycle data that we inputted earlier. This is the system configuration. There is a hot link to some of those details so you can get the literature on these components. And now this is the most important part. This is our bill of materials. And so this bill of materials consists of the hydraulic pump, the electric motor, the adapter to adapt the pump to the electric motor, the variable frequency drive, the accessory kit for that drive, the hydraulic pressure transducer, and even down to the electrical mating connector for the transducer. So, in order to purchase the components on the list, you can send a copy of the entire PDF or just a bill of material to us via the contact form below. Or if you still would like some additional support fine-tuning your application, you can also send us your information via the contact form and we can get on a, a live video chat and we can work through the process step-by-step. Step. Thank you, appreciate your time.